<sighs> so the man yeah. that we have on today's podcast needs no introduction. RJ Mitty, I have been following, I mean, obviously I've been following, following you since Breaking Bad, but I have been really following the work that you've been doing for the past year and a half. And I don't know what it is about you. I've just been so taken away by all the different facets of the work that you do from being an actor to being an advocate and um, being a supporter of um, actors who don't have voices in the way that you believe that they should. And I just want to praise you and say thank you for the work that you're doing in the world and welcome you to the show. Well, thank you so much. And it's, it's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. And great talking with you and, and I, I'm glad that you you like what I've been doing and it's it's one of those things where we just kind of have to keep pushing forward we, we I try to avoid being stagnant as much as possible yeah this is definitely a time that I feel like for people who don't want to be stagnant are being a little bit stretched so how have it's, you been doing during all this good I uh you know I feel like it's weird when there's turmoil or like some type of thing I'm always really busy um I don't I don't it's I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing it's just I find um there's a lot more to do now than ever before Mm. and I feel that we are in positions now where we can make an impact in a small area that affects a large group of people um in a way that we haven't been able to before um and I, you know this is this is something that people are connecting on technology better as as we are here and um i'm just trying to to continue to like keep sane and still re- remain socially distant mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you know yeah i feel that so you're in texas right i am in texas how do you like living there compared to California because that's where you were previously yeah. correct yeah I was I you know I, I really like it here especially right now um where I'm at there's like I think we have zero cases still or we have like <gasps> whoa we have like hundreds we have a hundred couple hundred now well only a week ago <laughs> yeah. um but um but we're we're further back than everyone so it's it's it, it's it came in handy moving here in September Mm. Um, I, I moved to a town called Brownsville, um, this past okay. summer, I, uh, I have a foundation based in Austin, Texas, and we focus on central and rural Texas. And, um, over the last five years, I've been wanting to work on, um, really shaping more of what we do to focus, um, South Texas and, uh, the Rio Grande Valley. Mm. And, uh, I became president of my family foundation this past summer and, some of the work required me to be more hands-on. Um, so I was like, if I'm going to move back, let's move back to the area I want to focus in mm. and, um, and take that time. And it's great. We're, we're next to, uh, we're literally on the border of Matamoros, uh, Mexico. Um, oh. Like South Padre Island, Harlingen. We're, I'm in a town called Brownsville, if I didn't mention. Yeah. I, so I grew up in I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and I went to school in Austin. I don't know where, I don't know Brownsville though, and I'm trying to think about. So so look, think of Texas. Yeah. As Dallas is at the top, Austin is in the middle. Brownsville is at, at the very bottom compared to relative oh. to Dallas. Oh. Okay. If you took Dallas like this and you it like that, it would be Brownsville. That makes sense. Okay, now I got it. Do you ever South get? Do you ever get a little bit of like a, I don't know, this, this is one of my personal things is always feeling like there's somewhere else that I need to be. Like I live in New York City. Which Every of day. Course, okay, you do. Yeah. Especially being like, Every I day. mean, when I think of you, I would think like you would, you know, be in, be in LA or be somewhere in California and, and being somewhere like Brownsville. And I'm sure that you're traveling a lot, love, but yeah, you know, I love that. Well, not so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But not right now. But no, I, I always feel this, this urge. The best way to sum it up now is they actually put it in a movie. 
It's um, it's in it's Moana. You know the song. You know the um, the I've been standing on the mountain song. Yes, yes. Literally every day of my life, that that song is how I feel every day. Oh my god! Oh my god! I so relate. I so relate. So one of my favorite um, there's a bunch of ladybugs in this room, by the way. So if you see me starting to like kind of karate chop the air, I'm not killing them. I'm just wearing them off. Um, Shooing away. <laughs> ladybugs are good. I, there's so many. There's so many in this house. It's it's pretty beautiful. Um, so one of my first questions that I love to ask is, what are you currently musing about in life? Anything in general, and maybe like not in the. We're all musing about the the coronavirus right now. What maybe even pre-corona or or uh, post-corona? You know, you'll be getting into. I mean, I musing is hard. I haven't had a good muse in a minute. Um, but, um, I, you know, I guess kind of get back to art. I, I've still been doing art. I mean, video games are where I've been at the moment in my musing. It's my, been my inspiration of keep pushing mm-hmm. forward one, one win at a time. Uh, but cooking, I've been doing a lot of cooking. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm actually in the middle of smoking right now, not smoking ribs. Yeah. I have to specify that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, that's kind of what I've been musing out on uh, right now. But um, just looking forward to get back to work. Right before I was doing this, I was um, talking to a theater um, mm. about doing a play. Um, wow. Somewhere I can't really talk about it at the moment because who knows? Yeah. Um, and then I, I was working on a movie we shot half of and um, and just really been – been trying to just get some good content but lately the the foundation um i've been using a lot about brownsville actually mm. um it's been a big inspiration for me um and a big focus and that's kind of why I, I wanted to move down here just to be able to really um to to have that surrounding environment and to like kind of get a better perspective and um i'm i'm ready to start traveling again mm. i uh I love I I love my place here and I, I'm happy to have all my, my family and friends here, but at the same time I'm like I need to I need to hit hit the waters. Yeah, yeah, I feel that deeply. So I, I know you probably get asked this all the time on every single podcast interview you do, but I would love to hear a little bit around your your journey and story on how you got started being an actor. Because I think it, I, I listened to it on a podcast a while back and I thought it was just um uh, there was a lot of, from what I could tell, there was a lot of weight on your shoulders really early growing up. Um, and so I just would love to hear a little bit more about that and what led, of course, into getting the role for Breaking Bad. Yeah, I mean, I, um, so when I, I would started kind of this whole path was my sister got casted out of a water park um, when she was one. And, um, <laughs> and it kind of, brought us to LA for a Lucille Ball campaign at Universal Studios. I don't know if you remember Lucille Ball you said do did you've been to Universal, right? Uh yeah. Yeah. But like ten years ago or fifteen no. years ago? No, I went like last year. <laughs> Wasn't Oh uh, no, so so there there was like a Lucille Ball area. I think it's still part of it. They might have turned it into a cafe. It's at the bottom. It was across the way from the mummy. Uh I okay. okay. I don't know if Maybe. I remember saying it. Farmers. Don't worry about it. It's, okay. it's probably long gone. Uh, I think it is. But anyways, she got casted to play like a baby Lucille Ball because she has bright red hair. And um, out of a water park, keep in mind. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're like, yeah, why not? My, my mom, right before, my, or right after my sister was born, a month after was in a car accident. And um, it was partially paralyzed. In uh for for about seven years after that, so from like one to seven, my mom, one to seven of my sister's life, my mom was partially paralyzed, and um, when we got this opportunity, we were in Houston, Texas at the time, and both my grandparents were kind of sick. Both sets of my grandparents were sick, so I was kind of between Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana, and Austin, Texas, and we were traveling back and forth, and they were sick four years prior to that. 
um, if that makes if those timelines make sense. Yeah. Um, and then that's why we were in Houston, but we got this opportunity and we're like, yo, we've been dealing with all this stuff for the last like five, four years now. And, uh, you know, this would be nice. This is a trip. It's a paid trip. It's one of those things that like it, it's covered all expense. She's working well. We get there and the job will goes for about a month and then it kind of goes out, but we still have this trip. So we start, she meets this agent through that job and that kind of takes us on this journey. I started doing acting classes and, um, and working on um, extra work. And I recommend anyone that, that is um, wanting to get into the industry or, or working into it. Um, I know right now is a little, a little interesting time, but this will be over. Um, but I, I recommend looking for background companies, extra companies um that handle major shows so type in your favorite show and then type in background and it will probably link you to a company that handles that show's background Hmm. um but um i signed up i started working on shows like hannah montana everybody hates chris weed seventh heaven drill bit taylor um a bunch of shows and movies all in mainstream as an extra and was uh working for about six months as an extra and uh i got the audition for breaking bad Mm. and i auditioned five times over the course of um over the course of like a, a quarter year three four month period and um through one day flew to LA I flew back from LA to New Mexico and flew back auditioned there flew back to LA and they called me and said I had the job and um to pack my bags and come back to New Mexico because I'm I'm pretty much late let's start filming Mm -hmm. that kind of what solidified me into this industry and kind of kept me on this path for all these years Mm -hmm. and gave me a platform Mm -hmm beautiful that's that's incredible so why do you say that you do recommend background work for people do you think that that is a way into uh fulfilling like your your artist's heart and your creative heart or getting in the door to those bigger roles i think it's i think it's a way to get you into the door i think it's a way to get you to work with professional people i think it's a way for people to get their hours and to make some money versus trying to do something that they may not want to do and what also happens with a lot of actors is you pay for classes you pay for classes you pay for classes i'm there's i'm i'm looking i talk to people every day and they're all doing these online classes and it's great to train that muscle and to 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 work on your lines and to have that person that motivates you and and inspires you to get these right but you know what's even better being able to work with people that have that job that you're trying to get Mm. and be able to to see how they do this how they do the processing how a set works you can only work so much in a room before you actually have to get on a set and background allows you to take what you practice in the acting and in the training to actually practice on a real set with having zero responsibilities other than don't get fired Mm -hmm. don't piss anyone off Mm mm-hmm Like that, that's all as an extra, that's all you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. And hopefully nothing drops on you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I started, I I started acting last year for the first time. Like I have done embodiment work and I've done this podcast for six years now and I've really enjoyed doing like spiritual work and somehow, some way it led me into starting to do some some classes just for fun as kind of like a spiritual practice is is embodying characters yeah. and um I, I i did a little bit of of background work and mostly i've been working on on short films that i see in new york and um i did one mtv dating show which was like oh my god it was one of the most embarrassing things i've ever done and also very funny and i'm i'm happy that i did it um one of the things that i really I, I, I now get and I admire 
actors, especially people who are on series like you, is like it is a lot of standing and and repetition and standing and repetition and doing it again and again and again it's like one very short scene can take uh like five hours hours, so hours. days days and or never get the shot and that's that's one of the perks of doing extra work is you find out very quickly do you want to do this job because if you if you're sitting in a chair for like five five hours and they never call you and they send you home and you hate this and you were complaining. No, that's, that's the job right there. It's hurry up and wait. Mm. That's all I do is, a, is I rush, rush, rush. And then I just sit idle until someone says, Hey, cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> How, do you love that? Like, do you find a thrill in that and the waiting around? Like, what is the struggle? What is the highlight of this experience for you? And then what is probably one of the hardest parts of this for you? I, I think how bipolar this is, is like, it's both the best part and the worst part of this job is because when it's big, it's big. And when it's not, it's, it's not like mm -hmm. it, it's just like cold and dark and damp. Yeah. Um, like that's, that's, that's what's fun. What for me is like, for why you were doing it is embodying the character, playing someone else, stepping out of that life. That's, I, I love, like being able to to create into entities of myself and, and it's something that's really cool to be able to to bring to camera and to take these people and bring them to life and in form and i think that's really one of my my favorite things about this job is just creating these alter egos um and it's it's an interesting process everyone's different um, but I, I think it's all a form of therapy. <laughs> mm, I agree. I definitely agree with that. What was a quality that you found yourself overlapping in with your character, um, Flynn, for example? Um, stubbornness. Yeah. Uh, I think that's why I put in all my characters. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just stubborn. What is your uh, sun sign in astrology? Oh, uh, I'm um. My son, I well, I'm a so I'm on the cusp of Leo and Virgo, and oh, all okay. my other stuff, my other stuff is Taurus. Oh, okay, wow, okay, that's great. So we're in, I think we're in like Taurus full moon right now. So you must be yeah. feeling extra indulgent and sensual. And uh, I'm also, I I'm. That, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, if you're home long enough, you'll find something to indulge in yeah. and be sensual about. Um, I'm oh, yeah. also, I'm a Leo and then my, um, my rising, uh, I don't know if you know about all the different ones, but you have a rising yeah. sign. My rising is Virgo. Okay. So very similar. So, what, what month so, I, or what, what uh, August or yeah. June? I'm August 19th. Okay. I'm 21st. August 21st. Yeah. Oh, amazing. That's so great. Um, yeah, Leo babies are the best, I, th I think, of course. I mean, and trouble, trouble, trouble. So much. It's so stubborn, but very loyal when they find a reason yeah. to be loyal. Um, so what is, a, what is a project that you've done recently that you're really excited about acting-wise, something you're really proud of? Uh, Acting-wise, I, um, I just shot this movie with, you know, Dove Cameron? Um, only because before this interview, I looked it up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um she she she's like she's the big name she's like the one that like trumps us all in the movie oh. but um but uh she uh she's in it um and some other amazing actors and actresses are in it uh, it's called isaac and we shot like 30 percent of this project and um and we we were they were going to take it and home it in and then we were going to supposed to come back in april and mm. clearly that didn't happen but um I'm excited. It's, it's it's interesting. It's dark. It's edgy. It's it's the director was thinking like he, he keeps telling me think of like how was it? It was like I don't. It's hard to explain what this movie is. It's really hard to explain. But it's like it has like a he's shooting it. I I don't want to say Fight Club, but you know the Fight Club vibe, mm -hmm. like gritty. Definitely. And kind of like twisted and kind of this this um this fantasy almost mm -hmm. world. 
um, it's kind of one of those types movies, mm. which I personally like. Um, I just had two movies come out called Standing Up for Sun- one called Standing Up for Sunny, another one called Carol the Bells. Um, one of those projects, Carol the Bells, um, is affiliated with a group called Inclusion Films, um, and uh, Joey Travolta who put this together, he, um, Inclusion Media, Inclusion Films, works with these schools that train individuals with disabilities in film and television, in front and behind. Mm -hmm. So, Carol the Bells was shot with a 70% disabled cast and crew um, in Bakersfield. And um, we're hoping to take that movie and show it as a platform for people with disabilities to be like, yo, hire people with disabilities because why not? Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're, they're, they're being trained. They have the training, they have the understanding, use this group, use these talented people and, and give people opportunities. Um, so we're hoping to create more films with inclusion films and get more people in front and, and training. Training is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is something that I, I, I was listening to something else you were doing in a podcast and you were I wrote down the quote, actually. Let me just say, you said something like, okay, Um, our job as actors is not to be us. It's to be a completely different person that we create for that world. Um, And I thought that was really beautiful. And it's, it's, it sounds to me like what you're saying is you envision or desire a, a world where casting directors are casting people with disabilities in any kind of role. Is that do you, do you, is that yeah. kind of what the dream? That is? that sums it up. I mean, initially, I I don't think there should be a discrepancy of hiring people. I think you should hire the best person for the best job, or mm-hmm. for their best job. Individual, yeah. like <clears throat> it's so often than not, people with the skill sets to do certain jobs are not getting those opportunities to do those jobs, and. Sometimes the people without the skill sets get those jobs Mm -hmm. just because of whatever reason may be. And I think there's now, right now in this time, there's an opportunity for people with true talent that, that not just the talent though, but that worked hard, that have the training, that have the understanding, come to the light and get the opportunities um, that they deserve. And, you know, a lot of times with disabilities and any, anything in the diversity category, that that people find as diverse are usually people that find abnormal um or or ostracized or those minority groups that that people people sometimes criticize or critique or or damn even um don't get the value that they are and i think it's so important now to show that true value of what you can do and and how you can bridge these gaps and not just have to like tear down these walls but use these walls as leverage and use these gaps and 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 fill those holes and find where where you belong and where you want to be because right now there's a lot of people at home that don't want to be at home but they don't know where they want to be you know they want to be somewhere they don't know where they want to be and they don't know how they're going to get there but they know when this is done they're going to go do that something (laughs) yeah but but we to be able to show people that it's like what what is that what is one what is that something two how are you going to achieve that something and if it's all if those two are possible then go achieve it and Mm. people just have these expectations of things that aren't real and i feel when you show people that that we can and we can show how this impacts not just their lives but everyone around their lives you can show that's real and you can show the impact on that Mm -hmm. and it's something that i feel that we we have a long way to go but i think if right now people are able to to lay low and hold out and home who they are and home what they want to do and try to find that target they want to hit now well, everyone just wound up. That air is gonna fly. Just make sure you're pointing at the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I. Oh God, that's so beautiful. What I've been saying about this time is that it feels like this um, 
just major cocoon period. Like we're all going in and we're, um, I, the ripples of this time have been really interesting. At the beginning, everyone panicked, freaking out. And then a couple of weeks in, everyone kind of like gets on TikTok and start mix, making these videos and they're trying to be funny and they're drinking their wine and they're making things about toilet paper. And there's like filters about that now. And, and then a yeah. little bit after that, the novelty's wearing off and the crazy sets in. And I think after we've gone through so many of these different layers and ripples, we're finally getting this point of being like cracking open, surrendering a bit, like realizing, okay, we're, we're actually here. We're, we're here to stay as far as we know. We don't know when we're coming out of this. And I think from that place, we can begin to, to slow down enough to see, okay, what, what is it that I'm rushing back to? I saw some sort yep. of meme like that on Instagram that was like in, in the pursuit of, in the pursuit of getting back to normal, ask yourself what that normal you desire to be like what what do you desire to create for your life and i think that i just have a feeling that a lot of these constructs and these arbitrary rules that we've been living by in these systems and um you know the closest thing that i can think of right now in comparison to what you're talking about with people who have disabilities coming into the acting roles is also like um a lot of like I come from a background of body image shaming and I was a bodybuilder and had major food issues and I think a lot of that is going to be crumbling down after this period because everyone's been home and there weren't, we're not doing these things like bodybuilding shows we're not perfecting our bodies yeah. we're not doing all these things for show like we did before and I think that all these all these systems across the board are starting to break up I think there's two I think there's two sides to that coin though as well mm. is like with every with every cocoon there's like there's there's you don't exactly know what's going to come out yeah be good or positive and you're gonna have both results and I, I see like there's this time where where we need to create healthy habits mm. um you know there's there's so many times where people are isolate uh, isolation is something that like I even struggle with it because I am never alone. Mm. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Like I like there is literally always something, always someone mm. 24-7. And it's for a lot of people that, that is the same way. But now I feel there's this this moment of that where it's like people aren't doing these things that kept them sane. That's true. That's true. Like, so how can we get people at home to develop healthy habits and healthy mindsets and and like and not dwell in what makes them these things because a lot of it is at home. Mm -hmm. And I find um there's gonna be a lot of positive there's gonna be a lot of positivity, but when this when during this period there needs to be more, I feel, of that reaching out, maybe not physically, but definitely socially um that's happening what are some of the habits that you've been holding on to or do you have any practices that you've been doing while you've been at home that keep you safe Same. video games <laughs> video games lots video. and lots of video games yeah. um luckily i have a pool which i'm very uh, i'm very grateful for you have to um, you have to in texas like there um, it's not an option you don't you well don't where, where i'm at trees spontaneously combust trees trees Oh, wow. No way. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. But but the thing I'll I'll explain that story later. But anyways, <laughs> that um you know, I, I've been just trying to um just cooking cooking well. Mm. Um cuz cooking away. We don't always <laughs> we don't always cook well. Um a lot of video games. I just keep keep jumping into it. Um still staying preoccupied with work. But but still trying to maintain like positive settings, not and not not drinking too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But um, sure. but it's it's you know there's 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 things that I think people forget we have to do to maintain ourselves, and um, and I'm very excited to see what what comes out of this chrysalis. <laughs> mm, chrysalis, yeah. Are you also a writer? 
do you write your own work or or things that you want to act in your own stories? No, I I hate putting things on paper. Really? I, I don't I don't I I I like I I'm not a big texture. I'm not big like I rather take a phone call. I'm not big like for some reason. I'm not even on my laptop, but like all my electronics are always fried. Oh really? I don't know what it is, but I destroy electronics. That's so funny. Um. Okay, I would. I I have another question for you here. Okay, um, you may have already kind of touched on this, but one of my personal life mottos is deeper the no, deeper the yes. So when you deeply say no to something, something that's not going to serve you, like writing, you don't care yeah. for it. You're deeply saying yes to something that does uh, feel yeah. really good and does nourish you. What is something in your in your life of how you know you have so many different things that you do? You have so many causes and places to be and things to work on. What have you found in your life is um, a deep no? What do you dedicate your nose to? And maybe this is even acting wise. There's something that you just know acting wise is not it's not for you. And so when you get invited to do something, you're just a no to it, or it's everything. Everything. Every, every, everything is a deep no. Everything I do, everything I say is just a solid, deep, heartfelt no. But, but, but it's here. It's here. And this comes up and goes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of a lot of my things is, is um, you know, I, I don't like – public speaking i don't like being in the public mm -hmm. eye i don't i i don't i don't like commercialism i don't like selling product or, or like what a lot of people like do on social media and, and like trying to always pitch 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 i like that's a deep no for me but it's one of those things that becomes a must um, um a necessary evil um in my life because mm -hmm. it's part of an, a bigger entity mm -hmm. um but um but yeah, I, I have many deep no's. <laughs> so if you don't like being in the public eye, how do you feel about doing a potential theater project? See, I don't see I don't see people when I'm doing my job. Like oh, like so scary. It, see when I when I speak, like I, I see certain things when I when I do like when I do lecturing because I so I speak I talk um anti bullying in college circles. Mm -hmm lecture circuits and and um overcoming adversities and kind of just facing those fears that you have and and you know I'm, I'm a big believer that no one is born a follower we choose to follow it's a decision um everyone's born a leader you can you're taught and you continue to teach yourself that you stay in these these paths and but the, the remember that urge that you feel to do these things mm -hmm. that's that internal leadership mm. that you have that those are those mentalities that you're like i want to go down this path but i've been told i need to stay in this path yeah and you choose to follow that but it, it's it's something that we we have to learn for ourselves um but when i do these talks and i do these these summits and lectures um it's very specific things that I'm thinking about. So for me, I don't see an audience really. I see, I see the individuals I need to see. Mm. Uh, and for theater, it's it's uh, unless I'm breaking a third wall or I need to, I don't I don't see an audience. Oh my god, theater to me seems like the scariest thing to do. By the way, I I wear glasses, and I don't wear glasses. When you do theater. No, I, 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 I need glasses. I don't wear glasses. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I guess so that, would, that would help then. If I'm, in, if I'm in a public setting, I can't see really who they are past five to ten feet. Yeah, that's a nice little like... So I don't have to worry about it. You don't have yeah. to worry about it. They're not there. If you can't see them, then they can't be there. That's amazing. Um, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I also wanted to ask you about your relationship i'm going all over the place i'm so in my feminine right now i just have many questions um your like memorization like your stance on memorization because you've uh, being on a series i can't even imagine like how much memorizing that you have to do and that requires like sitting still and like focusing on one thing 
that has been a bit of a struggle for me of like really having the the discipline to sit down sure. and to focus on and for me it's like two pages that I'm spending a week trying to learn and you've had so many pages so what is your if you have any yeah go ahead no no, no. You, there's there's a couple of things to it like it's it's not about how many pages it's about how long back did you get it for me, I like to read. I I read at night, and so I sleep. So I sleep on it. So the so what I read is fresh on my brain in the morning. So if I'm filming in the morning, I'll I'll read. I'll I'll have it. I've read it many times before, but I'll I'll focus on reading it the night before. So I sleep on it. So when I speak those words the next morning, they're already part of my vocabulary. Mm. So it, it's the for me, I find man, kind of manipulating the words that I'm reading into my own vocabulary, but they are these words. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I think so. So you would say them almost organically. So as you're as as it's like part of that thought, you've already had this thought before. So when you come to that line. You've already thought this, it's already slept on it, and now you can now you can say it in your tone and not as a line. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I have a semi-photographic memory. Um, I, I, I like, like, so I, I sight read. So when I read, I look at like three paragraphs and I go down and then I go and then I read. Um, if, if that if that's anything so and you like, can I'm also, wow so you can memorize I'm also a little it or? dyslexic sorry <laughs> okay you're a little dyslexic you said yeah so you're you have a semi-photographic memory and you can read like three you said three lines at a time so yeah that's amazing so i look I, I i i can i but I, it's it's so bad for you though it's not it's not how you're supposed to read um, but I think you're doing just fine. So but, whatever, supposed to. But it's, I, I find though, you look at the, before you read, you look at the overall page, you see the whole thing, and then you go into that, it helps your brain kind of categorize hmm. everything in that one sheet. Mm, like the order. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever um, had a moment where you just get like, like being on set? you ever get super stuck on something and you just can't remember oh, yeah. it for like a whole day has it ever gone like a long long oh, time and you, yeah. it's been bad okay and it how gets, do you it, you just work through you, it you, you make just, it good you make it, you make it good you, yeah. you just you make it you make them love that line so much more when you say it than when they than, than the way they wrote it but it's you you can't get hooked up on lines um as long as you have the intention of the character, um, as long as you're able to to continue that path of that character's journey, I find trying to spew lines doesn't matter because mm -hmm. that character's you're still invested in that character's time, and I find a lot of writers write to write. Mm -hmm. They love they love to and they love to see their words, which is perfectly fine. Um, but sometimes you'll, you'll watch shows and you'll be like, what is this going on about? Like, what is all this dialogue? Who's being paid to write this? And usually they're being paid by word. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, but I find if you're able to just kind of take your lines and just go through the process and, you know, from start to finish for each project, you probably read it a couple hundred times you know what i mean by the time you've auditioned by the time you prep for audition by the time you have audition by the time you go in for testing and about by, by the time you film you're talking months of working on this one singular project mm -hmm. so it, it's ingrained somewhere but it's for you to figure out how to embody those words into the character and have you still be able to to maintain mm. How old were you when you started to do um, the Breaking Bad series? I was 13 turning 14. How did that affect your 
13, 14, like your youthful, most youthful years, did you feel like you had also like a part of you that was experiencing a normal upbringing or do you always feel a little bit separate from your peers having this kind of lifestyle? Um, I, I think most of my peers had this kind of lifestyle because um, everyone that I was working with, I was wor working as an extra when I was little and, and most of my friends, a lot of them went into the military. Um, mm. um, a lot were in the acting, but when I was on Breaking Bad, I was the youngest person by like 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really any kids on set. And when there was, I had no um, interaction with them because of the characters were different. So mm -hmm. for me, most of my peers were in their late 20s, early 30s, 40s, 50s, so on and so forth. Um, so for me, I, I really felt that it was a normal, that, that this was this was my path, this was my life. I was going down it. Um, I mean, at the time, there was a lot happening um with my sister and my grandparents and my mother and kind of all these things that was this big storm um so it was more or less just just kind of maintain the responsible route for as long as I can and um try to do what I think is right in these moments and hope for the best yeah did you ever have a period of your life where you were just like fuck responsibility and just kind of rebelled and went yeah. My, my my last decade yeah now right now right, right now right now I'm still i'm perfect still time for it perfect you, time for you it you got your smoking ribs you got your you got your quarantine yeah. household you got him michael yeah. right there he, Mike, michael's part of the quarantine household right before all this he moved in so well that's that's perfect that's perfect it works out amazing okay this is so good. I'm loving this so much. I'm so happy to have had you on the show. Um, we Love have a pleasure. we have a divine deep dive round. So they're like okay. quick fire round questions. Are you prepared? Are you ready? No. Yes. Yeah. Great. No. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a? This is yeah. This okay. Let's skip this one. Okay. What is your like? <laughs> this is very simple. What is your favorite movie right now? My favorite movie right now. Um, ooh, I'm just going to say Fight Club because I watched it like three times now. I love Fight Club so much. Chuck Palahniuk is one of my favorite authors. I have this entire row so on my... Good. Yeah, so, so, so good. Um, candles or incense? This is a total like... This is a question that I copied from um, a Both? Lance. Okay, great. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't have one without the other, you know? Yeah, well, actually, I put my incense inside of my candle so that it's not, when it burns, oh. it doesn't go everywhere. It just falls right yeah, in the Yeah, that's smart. I want to try that. That's, yeah, it's a smart thing. Um, okay, what is one must-read book that everyone must get? One must-read book? Um, I'm looking at my books. <laughs> I, oh, uh... Oof, yeah, the Imperial Shakespeare, Volume One and Two. Wow. Okay. There's a good one. Cause Some you, light reading. Yeah, you know, you know what that is, right? No, what is it? I don't, I don't know. It's all of Shakespeare's work in two Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Light yeah. Yeah. Light yeah, yeah, light reading. Yeah, light reading. Yeah, super light read. Um, coffee or wine? Wine. Red or white? Ooh, red. American or not American? White, red wine. Oh, uh, 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 uh non-American. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, mountain. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think. <laughs> Go. Uh, mountains or beach? Mountains. Favorite artist to listen to in the morning? Like music that really puts you in the morning mood. Um, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, Mother Nature. 
I don't know. Good old Texas Mother Nature sounds. Yep. If you're going to an event on a Friday night, any kind of event, what would it would what would it most likely be? Uh, you know, not in quarantine. Um, a city event, something fundraiser. Usually, ninety ninety percent of my events that I go to are fundraisers. Like black tie uh, fundraisers, nice. Black tie jeans and button down fun. You you name it, the fun the. The raisers of fun. <laughs> um, yeah. What, like is, that. what is your quarantine Every, cocktail? Everything. Everything in one big bucket. Really big bucket. Just <laughs> just like, it's. you ever seen Gangs in New York? No, but I've been told I should. Yeah, well, you, you should. But. What yeah. do they have a bucket? Do they do a big bucket? Yeah, they they have a really big bucket. When you watch it, you'll see it. Okay, are are you um are you like a uh if if you if it wasn't a big bucket, let's just pretend, and it's an actual cocktail, would it be a bourbon or would it be a vodka or would it be uh, a gin type thing? It would, it would probably be a bourbon based bucket. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll stick with the bucket then. Um. Okay, that's those are all my those are all my divine deep dive round questions. You you win. Done. You succeed. Ah, oh, RJ, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and being here. It's been um for me on my side of the world, it's been in the making for a while of I was wanting to do this in person with you, but the the paths never crossed. So we, we found ourselves here in quarantine. What better time to make it happen? Here we are. Zooming around. Well, Zoom a pleasure. In. Thank you for having me. Everyone get the show notes for this episode and check out all the links that I include for RJ at com forward slash RJ dash MIDI. And we will see you next Wednesday for another podcast episode. Please let us know your thoughts by sharing comments on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or my website.